Oh, it's a spicy one today. Hello, welcome back to Pete's Behavioral Insights and Theories, aka Pete's Bits. I put a poll out on my Instagram asking whether you guys wanted a video on the psychology of racism. The answer was yes. When I started doing more research on the psychology of racism, I realized that it was too broad a topic to try and cover within one video. So in this video, I'm just gonna talk about one aspect of psychology of racism, and that is stereotype threat. And the reason why I like stereotype threat is because it's a counterintuitive idea that helps to explain why groups that are negatively stereotyped are actually at a very unfair disadvantage. So if you're excited to hear about stereotype threat, please can you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't yet already. We just passed 200 subscribers on the last video. I'm really, really grateful for the amazing support, guys. So please continue to support me and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the video. So what groups do you belong to? What stereotypes exist about your groups? Let's start by defining stereotype. So the way I'm defining stereotype is a set of behaviors or characteristics believed to be true for all members of a particular group. So if I start with one of the least offensive stereotypes out there, Canadians are nice, right? I'm sure there are some Canadians who don't like the stereotype and I totally understand that. Stereotypes in general are a bad thing because they remove people's individuality. However, as far as stereotypes go, this is generally a pretty good one. Canadian people are nice people. And in a survey done by the Canada Project, found that 66% of people uh, in Canada actually support this cliche that Canadians are nice. And they actually believe that Canadians are as nice as other people deem them to be. Well, isn't that a lovely thing? Canadians agree that they're lovely people. Unfortunately, however, there are many other stereotypes that aren't so pleasant. So today I want to talk to you about stereotype threat, which is this counterintuitive idea in social psychology that says that when groups are aware of their negative stereotypes, they actually behave in a way that reinforces and confirms those negative stereotypes. So I'm going to present some evidence for you about stereotype threat, and believe me, there's a lot out there. But as I'm presenting the evidence, I'm going to be saying some stereotypes which might come across as offensive. Please remember that I don't hold these stereotypes to be true within myself. Please don't misattribute me being the one who is reinforcing that stereotype. It's simply the stereotype the authors were investigating. So stereotype threat was first investigated by Claude Steele and Aaron in 1995. So in this first study by Steele and Aronson in 1995, they gave black and white college students a half hour test using difficult items from the verbal graduate record exam. And they split the participants into two groups. In group A, they said, this is a test of your innate intellectual ability. And in the second group, they said, this test does not reflect your innate intellectual ability at all. With the idea being behind these two conditions, that in the condition where they say that this is a test of your intellectual ability, they are provoking the stereotype that black students are innately less intelligent than white students. And the results that they found were remarkable. In the group where the stereotype was provoked, black students performed worse than white students, but in the other group where the stereotype was not provoked, the difference was eliminated. Black students performed just as well as white students. Now you might look at this study and say, well, you say that that's provoking the stereotype, but it's not very explicit. I wanna see more evidence. Don't worry, there's plenty more evidence. This original study is just the first one where the term stereotype threat was used, but since then this study has been cited 10,000 times. So in terms of the wealth of evidence that's out there supporting this idea of stereotype threat, it is enormous. So Steele and Aronson then conducted another study where they made the stereotype provocation more explicit. Neither group was told whether this was an indication of intellectual ability or not. Instead, they were simply asked to write their race on the front of the paper. Are you white or are you Black. And in these more explicit replications of the test, the results were the same. When students were asked to record their race on the start of the paper, black students performed worse than white students. However, when a very similar group of students took the test but were not asked to indicate their race, the difference between black and white students disappeared. Black students performed just as well as white students. Now, stereotype threat doesn't just apply to race, but applies to anywhere where there's a negative stereotype. So it could be stereotypes against race, could be stereotypes against gender, could be stereotypes against gay people. Even the most basic of stereotypes against old and young people seems to have been proven in the literature. Here's another study, which is actually my favorite study about stereotype threat. So I like this study because it shows just how robust stereotype threat is as a phenomenon. 
So this was a study taken in 1999 testing American Asian women. Now if you think about the social group of American Asian women in 1999, they actually have two conflicting stereotypes when it comes to maths. On the one hand you have the Asian stereotype that Asians are very good at maths, and on the other hand you have the sexist stereotype that women are worse at maths than men. Now in this study they got American Asian women to either indicate on the start of their exam their race, or their gender. And what they found was that when they asked the American Asian women to record their race before the exam, so they wrote Asian, they performed better on the maths test, and whereas when they wrote woman before the maths test, they actually performed worse. So this study helps to highlight how stereotype threat works. You get people to think about a stereotype before they engage in a task, and then when they do engage in that task, they behave in a way that confirms that stereotype. So you might be thinking from these first few studies, oh, that's really horrible for black people, and oh, that's really horrible for women, especially horrible for black women. But stereotype threat doesn't just affect black people and women. In fact, all of us have negative stereotypes about us, no matter what group you belong to. So even white people, who are historically the least discriminated against group, are subject to stereotype threat as well. Here's a study comparing white versus Asian people on a maths test. When the stereotype was invoked that Asian people are better at maths than white people, the white people performed worse on the maths test. And then again, when this stereotype was not provoked, the difference disappeared. Stereotype threat is also true for realms outside of academia. So here's a white versus black athleticism test. Now when the stereotype was invoked that black people were better at athletics than white people, the white people performed worse. But once the stereotype was removed, so did the difference in performance. And perhaps most hilariously, here's a study conducted by a few authors, including TED Talk superstar Amy Cuddy, which was a study investigating how white people performed on the IAT, or the Implicit Association Test. Now, if you haven't studied social psychology before, you probably don't know what this is. It's a little bit complicated, so I won't get into it now, but basically it's a test using reaction times to see whether people have any implicit, subconscious biases towards one social group or another. It's very often used to test whether people are uh, sort of secretly racist underneath their conscious beings, even if they say they're not racist, do they secretly hold some biases towards one group versus another? And pretty hilariously, if you remind white people that white people are the group that are most likely to come across as racist, they actually perform worse on the implicit association test, acting as if they were more racist. So what's really going on here? How can we see this consistent decrease in performance when stereotypes are invoked? There's a lot of different theories out there and we're still not really sure why this happens, we just know that it does happen, and very consistently. Here's the explanation that I find the most convincing, but if you have another theory about why this might happen, leave it in a comment below. So firstly is that the stereotype invokes a kind of social anxiety. By invoking the stereotype, you tell the candidate that whatever their performance is, it's going to be viewed through the lens of the stereotype of are you confirming or disconfirming the stereotype. And as a result of this social anxiety, participants tend to engage in what's called self-defeating behavior. They metaphorically shoot themselves in the foot. They might engage in behavior like reducing preparation for a task, they reduce their effort for the task, and by doing so, they create what's called attributional ambiguity. Or in other words, you can't really tell why they did badly. It might be because of their race, or it might just be because they didn't try that hard. And the reason why people might want to maintain this attributional ambiguity is because they want to maintain their self-image. By being able to say that their poor performance was due to low preparation or low effort, the converse point is that they would then be able to perform better if they did put in effort, rather than their poor performance being down to a factor which they can't control, like their race. So I hope that makes sense so far. If you found the video interesting, please can you give this video a like and subscribe down below. Before you go, I just want to leave on a more positive note, which is um, the things that we can do to actually alleviate stereotype threat. How can we reduce the effect of this terrible, terrible bias? So the first step is to actually learn about stereotype threat. So if you have any friends who you think should know about stereotype threat, maybe they're in the business of evaluating people, please can you send them this video so that they can learn about stereotype threat? Once we know about stereotype threat, the next step is to think about what stereotypes apply to the situation that we're in. But for every situation is different, so it takes a little bit of independent thought, whatever situation you're in, try and think what are some prevailing stereotypes that exist in your society, and how can we address them? And that's step three, is addressing those stereotypes. So step three, you can do it in either two ways. One is to remove the stereotype priming entirely. One unfortunate practice that exists today is getting people to state their race or their gender prior to taking a test. This is perhaps one of the worst things that you can do for invoking stereotype threat. As the studies I showed you earlier demonstrated, just by simply stating your race or your gender before taking an exam is enough to prime the stereotype threat effect. So if you want to get that kind of information for diagnostic reasons, put it at the end of your test so that people aren't doing the test under the pressure of stereotype threat. 
And another method which has proven to work in the literature is actually just to address the stereotype directly. In a study on maths tests between men and women, some women, as predicted, performed poorly due to stereotype threat. However, another group of women were told directly, hey, you might have heard that women tend to perform worse than men on maths tests. However, that isn't true for this test. On this test, we found that women perform just as well as men do. Simply being told that one line before they took an exam was enough to completely remove the stereotype threat effect from the results. So in closing, I just want to remind you that these negatively stereotyped groups weren't performing poorly because they were actually worse at the task. They were only performing poorly because of the stereotype condition, and once that stereotype was removed, those same groups of people were able to perform at the same level as the non negatively stereotyped groups. So this really is a consistent phenomenon in psychology, and it's not hard to see how a group consistently performing tasks under the negative influence of stereotyped threat would end up achieving worse life outcomes in the long run. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this one was a little bit heavier than some of my other content. Next week we're talking about something a lot more fun. We're gonna be talking about the Ikea effect, which I think is really interesting. So if you're interested in finding out about the Ikea effect, make sure you subscribe down below by hitting that big red subscribe button, and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Also, leave me a comment below letting me know what stereotypes apply to you and have you been the victim of stereotype threat in your life. Okay, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.